Welcome to today's tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to modeling this microphone in Blender. Let's get started. Here is the blueprint reference that I have prepared, which includes the front and side views. I created two different blueprints, and the difference between them is this shape here. I will open a new scene in Blender so we can start modeling. First, go into Preference and enable Importing Images as a plain add-on. Go into Side View by pressing Numpad 3, press A to select all, then X to delete. Drag the reference photo and place it in the viewport. With the image selected, press Shift plus S to set the selection to Origin. I will reduce the opacity of the image to something like 0.6. Then position the image along the z-axis to align with this line across the y-axis and continue to align the reference to be at the center. Now let's start modeling the grill, which is this part here. Just press Shift plus A, add a circle, reduce the vertices to 6 and change a line to view. Go into edit mode by pressing tab, then scale and position it here to start referencing these grills. I will try to match the correct size of the pattern on the microphone. With all the vertices selected, press E to extrude, then scale it inside a little bit to something like this. Now you can duplicate this shape once on this side, but first, just change the snap to vertex and enable this auto merge option. Press Shift plus D to duplicate, then snap it to these vertices. Just go back into Object Mode, and in the Modifier Properties, add the Array Modifier. I will change the Factor X to 0.665. This will determine the distance between the arrayed items. I changed the count to 50, we will increase the number later. Now we should rotate these grills to have a circular shape. To do that, just press Shift plus A, then add a Bezier circle. With the Bezier curve selected, Press G plus Z and position it here, then scale it by pressing S until it fits the circle that we have in the reference photo. I will disable the visibility of the reference photo in perspective so we have a clear view. Before we start converting our grill to a circular shape, make sure the object is in the center of the Bezier curve and set the origin to be at the center of the object. Let's go to Modifier Properties and add the Curve Modifier. The curve object will be the Bezier circle and set the deform axis to negative Y. Now the mesh starts to have a circular shape. I will increase the count to a high number to fill the empty space. To close these gaps here, select the Bezier circle and scale it. You can hold shift while scaling to have much more control over the distance. Now let's add another array modifier. But for this one, reduce the factor X to zero and increase the factor Y to something like negative 0.857. I will increase the count to 27, depending on the size you want. Just apply the modifier, but just add a backup in case you want to change the count of the array. After applying all the modifiers, just go into edit mode, then press A to select all, then M to merge by distance. This will merge all the vertices based on their proximity. I will go into Edit Mode, press and hold Shift plus Alt, then double click to select these top and bottom vertices. Go into Side View, press E to extrude, then scale along the Z axis to match this line in the blueprint. With these top and bottom vertices selected, press S plus Z, then enter 0 to flatten along the ZD axis. It's looking nice, but we have a lot of edges. I will reduce some of the edges. Go into Side View in Wireframe Mode, drag and select these edges. Select one edge to be an active element. Go into Select, then check a deselect. With those edges selected, press Ctrl plus X to dissolve them. I will do the same to these bottom edges. I will use the Loop tool to move the selected vertices to a circle shape. To enable the add-on, go into Preference in the Add-on section, search for the Loop tool and make sure you enable it. I will scale the top and bottom vertices a little bit along the Z-axis. Go into the Modifier Properties and add the Solidify modifier to add thickness to the object. 
I will set the thickness value to 0.03 and check only the rim to reduce the amount of geometry that will be visible to the camera. Apply the Solidify modifier. I will go into edit mode and delete these top and bottom faces. Select these edges again and press E to extrude, then scale along the Z-axis to align them with these lines in the blueprint. The reason for that is to have equal distance at both the top and bottom. Now let's finish modeling the top side of the microphone. Extrude the edge, then align it to the top line of the blueprint. Extrude again, but this time press S to scale to something like this. Extrude once again, then press M to merge the vertices at the center. I will select these edges and press Ctrl plus B to add one segment of bevel. Select these edges and add two level segments of bevel. Now press Ctrl plus minus to select the middle edge, then press Alt plus S to scale the inside to match the blueprint. Now that we have finished modeling the top side, let's start modeling the bottom side of the microphone. In this part, I have used the same method of selecting the edge and extruding. Just make sure you follow the line that we have in the blueprint. I will select these lines again, bevel them into two segments, select the middle vertices and scale inside a little bit. For this circle, add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl plus R and position it here. With that loop selected, press Ctrl plus B to add one level of segment. Then select these faces in the middle. Press I to insert faces a little bit. Just right click and change the selected faces to a circle using the loop tool. Just uncheck flatten and check radius. Play with different values of radius to have a nice round circle. With that face selected, press I to insert the face just a little bit. Press E to extrude inside along the x-axis, then press X to delete faces, select those edges and scale along the x-axis to zero. Duplicate these edges by pressing Shift plus D, then right-clicking to confirm. With those edges selected, press P to separate by selection. I will extrude to something like this. From here, I will extrude the edges until I have a button shape like this. I have provided a side view of the blueprint if you want an accurate size of your object. I will select these edges and add a one-level segment. But I see that the normal of the object doesn't align correctly. Press A to select all, then press Shift plus N to recalculate the normal. For this side part, I will use the same technique of inserting the face and changing faces to a circle, then extruding to match the line that we have in the reference photo. I will delete these faces, then select these edges and scale along the Y axis to zero. Press E to extrude, then scale a little bit. I will extrude again along the Y axis to have a hole like this. For those cut here, I will add the loop cut and then bevel it. With those faces selected, select one face to be an active element. I will select checker deselect, then press Alt plus E to extrude faces along normal. Press X to delete these faces so we have those cut. I will select these bottom facing inserts for something like this. Now I will use the hard ops add-on to add sharpen and smooth. But if you don't have the add-on, I will show you different ways to get the same result. I will use this button to explain how you can archive the same result if you don't have hard ops. Go into edit mode in select and select sharp edges. With those edges selected, press N in the item. Just increase the bevel weight to one. Right click to shade, auto smooth. You can leave it here and it will look nice, but I will add a bevel modifier to add more realism to the object and change the limit method to weight. Play this bevel amount to remove the sharp edge. Add the subdivision surface modifier and set the level to two to have more smooth edges. Now it's looking pretty nice. Let's start modeling the other part, which is the base of the microphone. Just add the cylinder, 
Then set the vertices to 24. Go into Edit Mode and scale the cylinder until it fits this base. I will also select these top and bottom edge grabs along the Z-axis. Just make sure you follow the line that we have in the blueprint. Just select the top edge, then bevel it to one segment of bevel to add chamfer. Select these bottom faces, then insert a little bit, then extrude along the Z-axis to here. Add the chamfer to these edges. I will insert these faces and extrude inside along the Z-axis, extrude again, and press M to merge at the center. Select the top face, insert it, and then extrude it to something like this along the Z-axis. Let's model this part here. I will change the 3D course position to this object, then add a cylinder, but this time reduce the vertices count to 12 and the cup fill type to nothing. Go into edit mode, press to select all, then S to scale while holding shift plus Z. I will continue to scale and align to match the shape that we have in the reference photo. For these cuts here, I will use a knife tool. Just press K to activate it. I will cut it to have a diagonal shape like this. Just don't forget to press C to cut through another side. Then press Enter to confirm the cut. I will delete these top faces. With those edges selected, extrude and match to these other lines. Extrude once again and align with these top lines here. Press F to fill the faces and insert a little bit. I will select the half side of the cylinder, go into the side view extrude, and then grab these faces to match these lines. Now let's add another cycle here so we can add these edges to join here. I will duplicate these cycles, rotate along the x-axis to 90 degrees, and place it here. With the edge selected, extrude, then scale a little bit, select the face, and extrude to here to match these lines. Select half of the cylinder again, go into side view, then extrude along Z to here. Scale along Z to zero. Here I will use the knife tool again to cut the line. Try to match with these vertices here. I will delete these faces. Snap these vertices to properly alight with these top vertices. I will add another loop cut here using knife tools. Select these vertices, then press G twice to slide these vertices to match these edges. Now I will add space to vertices. Using loop tools, this will add space and create equal space between vertices. I will select these vertices again, and with Auto Merge activated, snap these vertices here. I will do the same to these vertices. Just make sure the vertices are merged correctly together. Go into side view, select these edges and add a bevel. If you see these effects, just recalculate the normal of the object. Select the edge, then add a bevel to create a shape curve. Just scroll with the middle mouse until you have a curve like this. I will select these faces and extrude along the Z-axis. I will add smoothness to the object and remove some edges that are not supposed to be sharpened. I will add two levels of subdivision surface modifier by pressing Ctrl plus 2. I will also add sharpening to this base. Now let's finish modeling this part here. Just move the 3D cursor to this object and press Ctrl plus numpad 1 to go into the side view of the object. Press Shift plus A, then add a cylinder, set vertices to 24, and change a line to view. Go into edit mode, then scale to something like this. I will continue to align the cylinder until it fits the button shape that we have in the reference photo. Just select these edges, Press Ctrl plus B and add one level of bevel. 
Select this face, press I to insert, insert once more, and then press M to merge at the center. Just go into side view and add another cylinder. Change align to view and reduce the vertices to eight and cap fill type to nothing. Scale the cylinder and position it here at the top. Delete the half of the cylinder. Select the top edge and grab along the z-axis a little bit to here. Position it here so we can use boolean to cut through. Continue to play with scale and position until you have a shape like this. Now I will use the bool tool, add on. Just select this object first, hold shift and select another object then press Ctrl plus numpad minus. I will apply the modifier and hide this cutter. Go into edit mode and add a loop here, position it here, then join these vertices by selecting them, then press J. Join also these vertices so we have a nice edge flow. Now let's go into side view and select these faces. With those faces selected, press Ctrl plus I to inverse the selection, then press X to delete faces. Press it to select all, go to the side view so we can spin the selected faces, press Alt plus E, then spin. I will reduce the steps to 6 and enable the use of duplicates. But there will be a part that remains and overlaps, just don't forget to delete it. Just select all again and press M to merge by distance. I use slash to isolate objects so we can finish modeling these parts. Just select the edge, extrude and scale. Change the vertices to circle, extrude again to have a shape like this. Press slash again to get out of isolation mode, add sharpen to the object and remove edges that aren't supposed to have sharpen. I will add a subdivision surface modifier. I adjusted these faces here to have a shape like this. I will finish by adding another cylinder and putting it inside the grill to increase the visibility of these grills. And that is it for this tutorial. The project file for this tutorial will be available at my Patreon link in the description. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.